is Ju Young Park, and I am excited to be here. Are you as excited as I am? Okay. Um, I think that we all see the benefits of Atomy. We heard how great and amazing the products and the marketing plan is. And my goal today is to share with you why I got started, and I want to break down the Atomy system for you. Because no matter how good you believe something is, if you don't believe it, are you going to do it? No, and even if you do do it, if you burn out, then you're just going to give up because you don't see the end result, right? So my goal today is to logically break down the differences in this business and why I truly believe that you can become successful. Do you guys want to hear about that? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. I'm very, very, very thankful for this company, and I'm super excited as well because five years ago, I was sitting where you were sitting. Right? I was sitting in the audience and I was listening to the lectures and I was listening to the VODs and I said to myself, if this is real, then I better put my all into this because I know for a fact that one day I'm going to be able to create that passive income people on stage are talking about. And where am I today? I'm on stage now, right? Talking to you all about what can be done. So let's get started, okay? So before uh, I talk about Atomy, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, how I grew up and why I chose Atomy, okay? So my parents moved to the States, and they were first-generation immigrants. They moved here. They weren't able to speak English, so they worked really hard. You know, they worked in the cleaners, and they cleaned and did a lot of things and saved money to start their own business. But when they were starting their own business, they weren't able to speak English very well. So who followed along? I did, right? Because I spoke both, and I would translate for them. So without even knowing, I started to understand, or I started to learn what business was, right? So she would take me to the bank, and she'd tell me that she needed a loan. I didn't know what a loan was. I was in third grade, right? So I'd follow her to the bank, and she'd say, all right, Jew, tell, tell him that you need like an X amount, and ask him for the interest rate, and when we should start making the payments. I was like, what the heck is interest rate? I don't know, you know? So I will talk to them, but I started to understand that you can get a loan and you can get it because of your credit and this and this. And I saw her starting her own businesses and I was like, wow, this is exciting, you know? This is better than working for somebody because you're your own boss, right? Because you're always counting the money. So I thought all that money was always her money, right? No? <laughs> so I was like, wow, she's so rich. But I started doing that and I started to fall in love with business. And you know, you always see the movies where the little kids are out on the front porch selling lemonade. You know, that was me. You know, I was selling lemonade. And I always started going to the flea markets and I started selling goods from storage units at the flea market. So it was a lot of fun, right? I don't know if you guys ever done that before, but going to an old storage unit, buying some goods and then getting lucky and then going to the flea market and selling some goods over there, that's quick money. So I thought to myself, wow. I can start my own businesses and live like this. But things started to change, and I really wanted to make my own business, but I never figured out what it is that I wanted to do. And I saw my parents working really hard, but it didn't necessarily result in success, right? So I think a lot of us can agree that a lot of our parents, they work very, very hard, right? Especially in Korea. You wake up before the sun even comes up, and then you come home late at night, but still, the bank account's the same. Nothing's really changing, and they're getting older and older in retirement. It's, you know, it's not looking very bright. So I thought to myself, you know, why is it like this? And what are the things that we can do to change this? And what are the things that I can choose to do something different? So today, I want to give you guys a few different uh, pointers. And I, wanna, I want you to think with me, okay? So right now, we all have uh, things that we can do, right? We all have things we can do, and there's things that we can't do. So a lot of people that I speak to tell me this, right? A lot of motivational speakers say, you can do anything you put your mind to. You've heard that, right? And I do agree. I agree that you can do anything that you put your mind to, to an extent, right? So for example, if I want to be an NBA player today, right? And I put my mind to it, and I work really hard. I dribble and dribble and practice and practice and practice at my height and at my age. I'm going to have a very difficult time getting picked in the draft. Would you agree? Even if I worked really hard, right? So yes, working really hard 
matters. You know, that's the beginning. But just because you're working really hard towards a specific goal does not necessarily mean you're going to obtain that goal. It has to also logically work through, okay? So today, where are you? You know, what does your job consist of? If you're not doing anatomy, I want you to think about it, okay? So the things that we have to think about, um, if you guys can show me on the screen, uh, I want to talk about active and passive income. So basically breaking it down from the active part to the passive part. So everybody starts at one, right? One equals 100% of your personal ability or effort, okay? So if you have a nine to five, you're working, who has to go to work today? Can your friend go to work for you or do you have to go to work? Right, you have to go to work. You have to go to work and you have to perform and you have to do well enough not to get fired, of course, and you're going to try to work harder and harder to get promoted. Do you agree? But even if you work really, really, really hard, does that necessarily mean that you're going to go from one, two, three, four, five, all the way to the passive part, right? So passive income, the five I'm talking about, is zero percent, right? You don't have to do anything, but you're still making an in income. And you can do that multiple ways. You can work really hard, buy property, and you can get rent money. You can work really hard and save, get a 401k, whatever it is. There are many different ways to create passive income with time, okay? But the things that you're doing right now, how is it going to add up in the future? And what kind of businesses, I'm talking specifically about businesses, can you be a part of where you're putting in your work and you're investing, but in the end, you don't necessarily have to do anything to continue to get that income. And if you want to create this, then you have to think about the different aspects of business, okay? So I saw my parents working really hard, right? And I saw their businesses doing really well at times. And I figured out that they were doing really well because they had repeat customers, right? because they had customers who came, enjoyed the product, and decided to come back. And those individuals who would continue to come back usually introduced a new person and brought them with them to try the product as well. So maybe that's a restaurant. Maybe you go to a restaurant, you love the food, it's very good. Next time you come, you'd like to introduce it, right? You'd like to come with a friend and enjoy the food together, yes or no? Yes. And you try, you like it, you feel the price is all right, and you feel the quality is great. So what happens? You are a repeat customer, okay? So you, your business has to continue to maintain a certain level of repeat customers at the same time, continue to grow with new customers. So the business that you're doing, is it going to be able to create repeat customers? Because if you don't have repeat customers, then you're going to be just a revolving door, right? Customer comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out. Nothing is maintained. You're just, you're just maintaining a position and your ability of what you can do per day, per hour. That's it, okay? So you have to think about that aspect. And the next thing that you have to think about is what? Do I have the ability to do this business, okay? Do I have the ability to do what it takes to get to that level? Just like I was speaking to you about me wanting to become an NBA player. Do I have that ability? Even if I work hard, that doesn't necessarily mean that every time I'm practicing, I'm going to be any better than somebody else, right? There has to be some kind of talent, right? So what people usually say is, oh, that person who is successful, there's a reason why they're successful, because they have the characteristics, the traits to become successful. You would agree, right? NBA players, they're good. They're better than your average Joe. That's why they're pros right? Yes, they practiced and they did a lot of work to get to that part, but there are some people who can practice all day, every day for 10 years and still not be much better, right? That's just the fact. So in anatomy, what kind of requirements are there for an average individual to become successful? Does that mean just an average individual will still be able to make $50,000 a month? If the answer is no, you shouldn't start. If you don't believe that's the case, then there's no reason for you to do this business. I'm being very honest with you, right? Why do a business where only the special select few are going to become successful? That does not create synergy. So we have to answer that question as well. So there's two questions, right? So these things I want to talk with you today and I want to break it down, okay? So a lot of individuals, they choose three different things, okay? They choose A, B, and C.
A, I just want to talk about is just a regular job. Okay? Everybody gets a job. And most individuals who have high paying jobs usually have the what? The credentials to get that position. So that job that pays a high income is not available for everybody. It is not a free entry market. Atomy is a free entry market, right? There are no requirements. Anybody is able to register because there is no cost. There is no test. There is nothing. Okay? But outside of Atomy, there are requirements. Even if it's free, the next step to become, ex to become a something master or something this, a distributor of some kind, there are requirements and stipulations. So if you want a high-paying job, then first you have to go to not all high-paying jobs, but I'm sure you understand what I mean, right? You have to go to a four-year university, right? Go to university, pay your due. So how much does it usually cost to go to university? A lot. Okay? But let's say that you did really well, you studied, you got a scholarship, okay? But still, the cost of living still is there, right? Just because you got a scholarship doesn't mean everything's free. You still got to eat. You got to buy books, right? So, let's just say $10,000 a year, you know, that's not much, right? But let's say that it's going to cost you $40,000 then. I mean, I'm talking about everything included, right? Eating, transportation, books, that's not very much, okay? And then what? You have to try to prepare, you're, you're going to be working after you graduate to get the position that you want, right? There are a lot of jobs available, right? I hear people saying, oh, there are no jobs, you know, the job market is horrible. But you know, what they're really saying is, the job that I want isn't available to me, is what they're saying, right? Especially in Korea, right? They say, the job market is horrible. I've been living there for the past eight years, so I feel like I'm more Korean now than American. But <laughs> uh, living over there, you know, I've been talking to all my members and a lot of different members, and they tell me, you know, the job market's horrible, you know, I can't get any jobs that pay more than um, $2,000 a month and this and that. And I'm like, you know, down the street right here, you can get a job working at the factory and get $4,000 a month. They're like, really? But I don't want that one, right? They don't want that one. So there are lots of jobs, but do you want that job, you know? And usually the answer is no, right? So... It takes about two years to get the job that you want, is what I'm trying to say, okay? You study, go here, go there, and then you finally realize, yeah, this is okay, and then you get it. And during that time, you're also having to eat, having to invest, right? So how many years is this? Six years, right? Six years later, how much money have you spent? $60,000, okay? $60,000. And this is for what? To get a job where you're saving maybe 1000 to $2,000 a month right? After taxes, expenses, and that's a lot of money, right? Being able to save. I'm not talking about making money, right? I'm talking about you saving money. So in a year, that's about $24,000. So if you're saving $24,000 or $12,000 a year and you continue to save, it's still going to take you a while to pay for your debt, right? So if you have a $60,000 loan and you save $500 a month, I think it's going to take you 10 years to pay that off, okay? 10 years. 10 years is a long time, okay? But after you're paying that off, how much do you actually have left, okay? So why am I telling you these things? I'm telling you these things because that's reality. That's what our, the millennials and individuals are talking about, you know? They're saying the world has changed, jobs are hard to get, it's hard to save, and I agree. I don't disagree. But at the same time, there are different opportunities. So what do they do? What are the different opportunities that we have? So individuals who work here and continue to work they usually realize after 10 to 15 years, they're like, oh man, me staying at this one job isn't going to bring me, bring me my dream, right? It's not going to, me just working here every single day, it's not going to account for passive income. I got to do something else. So what's the easiest thing that somebody can do? The easiest thing that somebody can do is going to sales because it costs nothing, right? You can be a salesman. You can sell cars, you can sell insurance, you can sell cards, whatever it is. You can sell something on your extra time, right? You'll be able to work part-time, full-time at your work and part-time at your sales job and continue to work to make what part-time income? Just a little extra something on the side, right? So let's talk about that. Um, when I was working with my parents and I was helping them, I always worked at their stores, right? 
So I was always working at their store, and they'd give me some allowance and this and that. But she told me one day, she was like, you know, you need to stop going to the flea market and selling and doing the business on your own. You got to work for somebody, not for us, right? Because I guess parents being bosses is a little different, right? Because I can still not go to work, and they won't, like, kick me out of the house, right? <laughs> but they say, you got to work for an actual boss, you know, get a job. So when I was 16, I got my first job, and I decided I wanted to sell credit cards, right? So I went in and got a job selling credit cards, and I started to realize the difference between that and my own business, right? So in, in a day, I only have eight hours a day to work, right? To do what? To sell cards. But it seemed like every time I wanted to meet somebody, I had to invest time and energy, right? So whatever product that you're selling, you have to drive to that person's location, talk about that product, explain it to them, and then hope that they buy it. And that takes how long? That takes a minimum of two hours, driving there, explaining, and getting to your next location. So if it's taking you two hours, how many people can you meet a day? Four people. That's it. So I already saw my income ceiling. I said, what? That's all I'm going to be making? I don't want to do that job. Four people. That's it, right? But every single person that you meet, I don't care how good of a salesman that you are, are they always going to say yes? No, because you can do a perfect, you can do a perfect job explaining everything without one error, but that person that day can be in a bad mood, right? You did everything that you were supposed to do, but that day they just, they just don't want to hear you, right? So plus, you have to have consistency, right? You have to be able to go back. So it's not just two hours, four hours, six hours. And that's invested for what? For that one-time sale? That's what I thought to myself. I'm not creating passive income from selling this product to this individual because I'm only making one sale and that's it. I'm hoping for a repeat sale, but my cards, you know, you're not going to be changing cards every single month, are you? Yeah, so pretty much my network gets dry pretty fast. So I said to my mom, I said, listen, this is, not, this is not for me, you know. I don't think selling cards is any good. So after four months, I quit, right. And I said, you know, what can I do then? If A is not right and B is not right, what is it that you need to do? How are you going to become successful? You know, that's the question. And I told my parents, I said, listen, um, I don't want to go to university because if I go to university, it's going to cost a lot of money and there's no point in me going to university because I want to start my own business. And she said, you have to go to university. I don't know, Korean parents, you know, they're like, you have to get an education, you have to go to university. And I said, all right, but I'm telling you, I don't want to go. And she said, you have to go. And I said, okay, remember, I said, I don't want to go. Okay, you said, I have to go. So who's paying for the tuition? <laughs> That's right, mommy's paying for the tuition, right? So she decided, I decided where I wanted to go, and I really didn't want to go to university because I wanted to start my own business. And when I went to the bank to transfer, translate for my parents, the accountant, they never asked for her certificate. They never asked for a diploma. They didn't say, what, what university did you graduate from to get that loan? What did they check? Her credit score. So did I need to go to university to get a loan? Exactly. So it wasn't for me. That's what I told her. Logically, I said, you know, it just doesn't work. There's too much time I have to invest into school and there's money. I have to, I'm just losing money, mom. You know, but she said go. So I went and I went to university and, you know, I should have studied business, right? Because I love business. But me, I was just like, oh, I can listen to all the YouTunes and listen to all the different amazing professors online for free. But I decided, you know, maybe I need to build a community. So I studied theology, right? Because, yeah, totally different, right? Totally different, right? And people look at me and they're like, you studied theology? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes, I did, you know. Don't judge a book by its cover, okay? <laughs> so I studied theology because, you know, my parents, they, they were pastors and they said, you know, <clears throat> But, you know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't my God. It was their God, you know. I just went to church with them, you know. But I was like, you know, if there is, if there is a heaven and a hell, I'd rather go where? Yeah, I'd rather go there. So let me look into that, okay? So I studied that. And during that time, I started to understand more. And I started to understand that there's more to just making money. You know, I took psychology classes. There are so many different aspects of how you market, how you do this and that to draw consumers. But in the end, in the end, everything that I learned, if you don't give value 
to the end user, that user will leave. Okay? If you don't give what? If you do not give value to the end user, the end user will leave and you will never have a sustainable business. It's impossible. Okay? So I started looking into what can C be? You know, what, what is it that I have to do? And it was this. Not channel out of me, okay? But <laughs> it was consumer habit. Okay? If you are able to change consumer habit, you have a very successful business. Okay? So let's talk about consumer habit. What is consumer habit? Okay? So you, everybody here today, if I say coffee, what company pops up into your head? Starbucks. Okay. Did you study Starbucks? The majority of you said Starbucks because that's what you've been taught, marketed, seen, right? Not because you drink it, not because you studied it, it just pops up. If I say hamburgers, what pops up? And yeah, McDonald's, right? So you didn't take, you didn't go to, you know, the hamburger academy, did you? You didn't. But why? Why do these companies pop up? Because they change your consuming habit. Whenever you see, hear, coffee, or hamburger, you automatically think the yellow arches or, you know, the Starbucks logo, whatever it may be. So if you want to create your own coffee shop, then who are you competing with? You're competing with Starbucks without you even intentionally desiring to do so because all your consumers already have that mindset stuck in their head. So if there's a Jew Bucks and there's a Starbucks, where are you going to go? That's right, so I'm going to go bankrupt. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. There's only a Jew Bucks and a Starbucks right next to it, and you and your friends want to go grab coffee. You already know what Starbucks tastes like. You already know what you want to order from there. You don't even know what the heck Jew's selling over here, right? So where are you going to go? The chances of you coming to my store is less than 20%. And that's even high, you know? So... If you cannot change consumer habit, then you do not have a business. You think you have a business. You have a failing business from the start. You're going downhill from the start. Okay? And that's what I began to understand. And I said, you know, how am I going to change consumer habit? Because consumer habit is so difficult to change. Everybody in here, raise your hand if you drink milk. Everybody drinks milk, right? Almost everybody. Where do you buy your milk? Do you have a cow at home? You don't milk your own cows, right? You may. That's why I'm asking. But if you don't milk your own cow, you're going to go to some store, right? You're going to go to that store, and you're going to buy your milk. But every time you buy your milk, more than 90% of the time, you're going to buy the same milk. You always buy the same milk. Even if you're talking on the phone and you don't even know what the heck you're doing, you end up back in your car with milk next to you. It's the same milk you bought last month or last week. It's the same milk. Why? Because that's your consuming habit. It's a habit. Without you even knowing, you purchase the same items. So how are you going to change that? How am I, as a milk salesman, or the CEO of a milk company going to change your consuming habit to drink my milk? How are you going to do that? If you can't answer that question, you should not start a milk business. Because you're going to fail. You can't compete with old competition. Okay? So, what people try to do in Korea is what? Buy one, get one, free! Free! So what, what, your milk is right here, but the lady next to the milk, because we have, you know, helpers all around in Korea, they're like, hey, hey, don't buy that milk today, because the one right next to it, same price, but you get another gallon. So if you hear that, then about 80% of you will choose to try the new milk. But still, 20% will refuse. So let me get a raise of hands. I would try the new milk. Raise the hands. Because you get one for free. Yeah, right. Still, even if they give me one for free, I'm still going to drink my own milk. Raise your hand. Exactly, right? It's always like that, okay? But now, let's say that you change. You, you, you try that one plus one, okay? You're drinking that milk. You like it. Nothing's wrong. Didn't get any stomach aches. Everything's good. Pretty much tastes the same. 
and you go back to the store, where do you think your hand's going to go? Because today it's not one plus one anymore. That was just that promotion. So are you going to buy that milk again or the buy, buy the milk that you used to drink? Exactly. That's consumer habit. You can't change it. The only reason you chose to take a chance to change your consuming habit was because they gave you value. Because they gave you money. That's it. You saved money. And logically, in your mind, it was a better deal. If you cannot do that with your business, you need to work for somebody who can do that or create one that can do that. So I looked and I looked and I looked for so many different business opportunities, but I was not able to find any that could solve that problem. So after I graduated university, I decided, you know, let me, uh, let me move back to Korea. Because one of my friends called me, they said, you know, there's just this amazing job in Korea, you've got to come. Um, you know, it's a job of a lifetime, and I was like, oh, really? You know, I looked into it, and it was amazing, you know? It was a great pay and super easy work, and I said, okay, let me go over there, learn some Korean, learn the culture, and see how it goes. So I moved over there, and I started spending time, you know, at work and doing this and meeting new people, and then I met my one and only beautiful wife, Nadi, right? And we got married. And after we got married, she told me something. She said, you know, I need to buy deep cleanser. I had no clue what deep cleanser was, right? So I just said, okay, that's fine. To me, it was just soap, right? <laughs> she wanted to buy soap. You know, just another name for soap is deep cleanser in my mind. And I said, okay, you know. I bought soap many times, went to Walmart. The most I ever paid for soap was like three fifty dollars or something, you know. <laughs> Cheap, okay, I can buy it for you, you know. But... She didn't go to Walmart. She went to the mall, right? She was going to the mall. I said, why are you going to the mall to buy soap, you know? I've never been there to buy soap. But, you know, I just followed her, went along with her. And then the first store she goes to, you know, they're sampling, you know. And then telling her, you know, how great it is and then showing her. And I was like, oh, that's great. You know, are you going to buy that? She's like, oh, I don't know. And then the sales lady says, you know, oh, this is only $70, I said, what? Se what? $7 or $70? She was like, $70. I said, oh, okay. I, I didn't act like, you know, I was surprised. I was just like, hmm, all right, you know, because I didn't want to, you know, tell my wife, you know, that I was shocked or anything. <laughs> so, but I said, I said, you know, you never want to buy the first item that gets introduced to you, right? You want to always shop around. Why did I say that? because I was hoping for her to go next door to get a cheaper one, right? So I said, let's go over here, hon. So we went over there, and then all I was interested about now was what? The price. So I'm looking over there, I'm trying to look at the bottle. There's no price on it, you know? And she told me, she was like, this one's $90. I was like, what? Dang it, I should have told her to buy the other one, you know? <laughs> but then my wife was like, you know, I don't want to buy any of these two. Let's go to the store that I researched, and I was like, of course my wife wouldn't buy anything this expensive. All right, hon, let's go, you know. So we went to the store, and to my shock, the one that she wanted was $110. How much? Yeah, over $100 for what? Soap. Soap. That's all it was to me, okay. And I was shocked, but I bought it for her. And we went back to the house, and from that day on, I started to research what deep cleanser was. And I still couldn't understand the reasoning behind that price. Because I understand skincare. Skincare, you apply it in the morning, and it stays with you all day long, and that guy works and works and works. Keeps you moisturized, helps you get rid of your wrinkles. You know, there's, your skincare products are working really hard for you. But this deep cleanser... I, I watched her use it. I did, I did. You know, she'd go to the restroom, wash her face, and she would start pumping. What'd she pump? One dollar, two dollar, three dollar. You know, she's pumping money out. And she's applying that over there, washing her eyes, and then looking in the mirror and getting everything out, and still mascara's on there. So what? Four dollars, five dollars, six dollars. Man, she's just pumping away. But as she's doing that, 
It's, it doesn't stay on her face for longer than 30 seconds. So in 30 seconds, she's using $6. Does that make, does that make sense to you? It sure didn't to me. And I said, hmm, there's something wrong here. <laughs> you know, but happy wife, happy life, so I didn't say anything, right? So, <laughs> so I started researching, but at the same time, you know, I wanted her to use something else, but I didn't know what to tell her to use. So luckily, we went to my mother-in-law's, and she forgot to bring her deep cleanser. She forgot to, right? She said she was going to tell me to go get it because we only live like five minutes away because she didn't want to use what was at the house. But she decided not to, and I, I, I was very, very happy that she used what was at the house. Why? Because, you know, I watched her for two weeks using that $110 deep cleanser. For two weeks, I watched her, right? Every time she came out of the restroom, her eyes were bloodshot because she was rubbing so hard trying to get that mascara off. But when she came out of the restroom and my mother-in-law's, her eyes were beautiful, white, clear, you know? I said, honey, what'd you use? She said, she, I just used what my mom had. And it's twice as good. She told me that. I said, really? See you later, you know? I didn't want to continue the conversation. Why? If it's twice as good, then how much is it? It's like $200. I was like, what the heck is she using in there? So I didn't want to know the price. So I was like, oh, twice is good, huh? All right. <laughs> but she told me, she did the research, and she came back, and she said, you know, honey, for this one bottle, it's only $15. I was like, really? Only 15 And if you buy four at a time in bulk, it's like only $8. I was like, really? And I told her, in all sincerity, I was like, honey, please use it for the rest of your life. <laughs> really? That's atomy. Okay, so what happened? That day, without knowing anything about the product or the price of anything, my wife changed her consuming habit, and I also agreed with her changing her consuming habit. Because of how good, not price, we didn't even know about the price, because how good the quality, how good the product was. It was twice as good, she said, and I the individual who didn't even use it noticed the difference when she walked out of the restroom. I saw that it did a much better job cleansing and getting rid of her eye makeup and her complexion was better as well. And I said, listen, if this product is as good as you say and the price is this reasonable, we have a business. So I went home and I logged in to the Atomy website and I started reading the motto and stuff, and I, I was very confused. I thought I was on a theology seminar website or something, you know? Cherish the spirit, create the vision, follow the faith, serve in humility. And I was like, am I on the right website here? <laughs> and then I went into CEO Park's VOD, and he was lecturing and talking about how if you have great prices and good quality, consumers will run to you, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's right, that's right. And I started listening and listening. And I st as, as, as I started listening and getting deeper into the VOD, I started getting tears. And tears started running down my eyes. Why? Because I finally found what I was looking for. I finally found the business that I've been searching for. I grew up in America. Uh, my parents worked two to three jobs constantly and sometimes three to four jobs. They left at six in the morning, five in the morning, come back at two in the morning, slept for four hours at max. That's how she took care of me, right? Never once did I hear my mom complain. Never once did I hear my mom say, oh, this is hard, or, you know, trying to scold me for not eating my food, you know? <laughs> Nothing. She always told me everything is okay. Everything's gonna be okay. This is great. You're going to be able to do everything that you want. And that was the American dream. That's why she came here, to try to provide that for me. But one day I woke up in the middle of the night, and I heard her praying in the room next door. And she was crying. That was the first time I ever saw her cry. She was crying. She was like, Lord, why is it so difficult? Please help me. Please help me. 
And she was just crying and crying. And that was the first time I saw a different side of my mom. And I didn't realize that that even existed. But that broke my heart. And that was in the third grade. And I finally realized that why my life was a little bit different, why I wasn't able to see my mom so often. And it was because we were poor. That's all it was in my mind. She's working so hard because we're so poor. So I have to make money. That's all that ran through my head, making money. And at the age of 17, I promised myself by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be a millionaire. That was my goal. I said, I have to become a millionaire. By the age that I'm 30, I have to have houses, cars, assets, whatever it may be, and it needs to be more than a million dollars worth of value. And that was the goal I set for myself. And when I saw that VOD, I was 26. I was 26 years old when I watched that VOD. And I had tears of joy, hope, and happiness running down my face. Because I finally found a tool that I could be a part of that I could create and finally get my family, my mom, and everybody that I loved out of poverty. That's why I had tears. And today, I want to tell you it's the same hope and vision for you. Working hard, yes, of course, everybody is going to be working hard. But just because you work hard does not necessarily mean success. But when I met Adam, I finally understood that this was the right tool and the right product that would get me out of that rat race, of that same cycle, that loop, and finally give me freedom of time and money to spend with my loved ones. Why? Because it gave real value and it gave incentive for individuals to become a part of the system. The power that Adam has to change your life is beyond what you understand. Adam is once in a hundred years kind of business. This is how I explain it. For a lot of individuals, for me, I'm a Christian, okay? But to a lot of individuals who are non Christians or non religious, if you talk to them about a religion, to them, every religion is just a religion. They say, Islam, Catholicism, you know, Christianity, whatever it may be, they're all the same. They're just religion. Right? Same thing with network marketing. They say, Adami, that's just a network marketing company. It's all the same, but it's not. From the outside, when you look in, it may look the same, but once you go in and dig deeper, you realize that it's not the same. So what's different? And I'll tell you today what's different. And that's the hope that we have because it is different. If it was the same, you shouldn't be sitting here. You should hurry up and run home, run away. So what's different? The difference between Adamy and every other network marketing company that I have been across is Adamy gives you what we call luck. Atomy Systems brings along luck, not just effort. So let's look. So effort and ability, they're two different, totally different things, okay? The ability to do something, let's just say ability and effort, okay? You can work really, really hard and still not be able to do certain things that the job requires you to do, which then means you don't meet the qualifications. For example, no, we can say that Atomy, amazing quality, amazing prices, you should give it a try, okay? Repeat after me. Amazing quality, amazing prices, you should give it a try. Ready, set, go. Easy, right? Everybody can say that. Did you struggle to say that? You didn't struggle because you know how to speak English. (laughs) Now say it in Korean. Ready, set, go. 
come on. Try really hard. Put in the best effort that you can. Ready, set, go. It doesn't work. Why? You have to understand the fundamental aspect of why I'm doing this. If I say amazing prices, amazing quality, you should give it a try. Everybody here who can speak English can repeat after me because you speak English. But if I tell you to say it in Korean, you can't because you do not have the Korean language ability yet. Right? Now, if you want to learn Korean, I'm not saying that you're not going to be able to, but it's going to take you a long time. It's going to take you more than a few months. Would you agree? Now, if your Atomy business required you to speak Korean along with English, then you are in the wrong boat. You're going to have a difficult time. There is a wall. It is not a free entry anymore. For you to be able to speak, for you to be able to become successful in this business, and if it required you to speak Korean, then some of you would probably have quit. But what's the difference between having to sell something, having to have a network, having to be able to do X and Y? It's the same thing. So if Atomy required you to have a big network, to be able to sell, to be able to do these things, then you, again, would not become successful. So if you look at other compensation plans, there's what you call direct sponsorship, sponsorship bonus, things of that nature, right? So if you cannot directly sponsor individuals, then you do not have the ability to get the sponsorship bonus. So therefore, your pie becomes smaller and smaller, and you won't make any money. So even if it's free entry, there's no luck. You have to have luck come along with the system, but you don't. Because the company will only pay you depending on who you personally register, who you personally maintain. But in Atomy, that's not the case. So let me draw it out for you. This is you. In other companies, you register here, you register this person A, so you get 100% of A, of course, because why? You registered A, but let's say that A registered A1, okay? But you didn't register A1, but this person did. So this person gets 100%, but you only get maybe 50%. And it continues to go down until you get 0%. So your group's growing, but does it have any reflection to you? No, it doesn't matter to you because you didn't personally do the work is what they're saying. That's the stipulation. So if you have to always be 100% the person responsible in building, then is there any luck involved? There's no luck involved. It is 100% dependent on your personal ability. So that means that not everybody can become successful. But in anatomy, that's not the case. If I register this person and this, regis per this person registers 1,000 people, you get 1,000, all the 1,000 people's PV, you get 100%. That means that you have luck on your side. What does that mean? That means the probability, the possibility of success in anatomy is much greater than any other system. And anatomy is the only company in the world who distributes global, all the global PB daily with the end value. There is no other company that does this that's binary with no registration or maintenance cost. This is your ticket out. Does this mean that it's easy? No, nothing in life is easy. But does this mean that your success, your ratio, your possibility of success is greater than any other company? Yes. When I went to the Success Academy for, for the first time and I saw the leaders come up here and I saw them bowing and saying that they had this, you know, they're making more than $200,000 a month, I mean, a year and this and that, I looked at them and I said, well, you? I'm being serious. He said, she just looked like my grandma. <laughs> and I know my grandma isn't making $50,000 a month. And I know there's no position that, I don't think there's anything that she could do to make $50,000 a month, honestly. Now, what's she going to do? Nobody's going to pay her like 
thousands and thousands of dollars to, I don't know, what does she do? Cook? Clean? It doesn't work like that. But there are people coming up here making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm like, you? How? You never thought about that? I thought about that when I first started. I analyzed every single aspect of Atomy because I didn't want to waste my time here. If this wasn't right, I'm too young. I got to go do something else. I have to go make my money somewhere else. If this company is going to be gone in the next 10 years, it's not worth me investing my time and energy into it. That's what I thought. But I saw that people who didn't deserve to be up here came up here. What do I mean by not deserve to be up here? They did not have the ability or the skills to get up here, but they were pushed up here because other individuals in their team and the company had a system in place where every single person can become successful. If you think that there's something wrong with that, then you are misunderstanding how difficult it is to succeed by yourself. You can never succeed by yourself. There has to be somebody working with you at all times. In anatomy, that's what happened. I went to Korea and started the business. But I lived in America my whole life. I didn't know anybody in Korea. So did I have a network in Korea, yes or no? No. So if you're saying, I don't have a network, I didn't either. I worked 10 hours a day for 30 days and I got paid $73.30. That's 300 hours of work. And I got paid how much? $73.30. That breaks down to approximately 24 cents an hour. Is that a lot of money? Are you going to keep working for Atomy, making 24 cents an hour? You better, because if you don't, you won't come up here. You have to understand that this isn't just time and money, but you are given the opportunity to build a $50,000 a month profit business without spending money, without having to know everything from the beginning. This is the only system in the world that I know that you can grow with the business. No other business allows you or gives you the chance to grow with the business. This is what I mean. Let's say you want to open up a restaurant and you do not know how to cook, but you open those doors and your customers come. You make that meal for them and they're like, wow, this is disgusting. And you're like, don't worry, sir, I'm learning. Come back tomorrow and it'll taste a little bit better. You think they're going to come back? They're not going to come back. You can't grow with the business. You have to already know how to cook. But anatomy, you don't have to know how to sell. You don't have to know how to speak. You don't have to have a network. You don't have to have anything. Why? The system has already been set so individuals with no skill, all they have to do is say, let's go, let's go. Right? They're like, hey, tell me a little bit about Atomy. I'm like, sorry, man. Don't know anything, but let's go. Let's go have a he listen. They're like, I explain to me about the products. I don't know. They're just really good. <laughs> Seriously. You can, you can explain it all you want, but if they try it and they don't like it, are you going to sell it? No. So what's the point? What's the point about lecturing them for an hour about how great and amazing it is and they try it and they're like, oh, I don't like it. Business doesn't work like that. And once we understand this, we'll be able to grasp how amazing Atomy is. You don't have to invest anything. You just do. You just go. You just say, try it. It's great. You want to learn more? Let's go listen. And what? All the VODs are available online. Atomy has changed my life. And it has changed the lives of all my partners. I'm not the only one making money in anatomy. All my partners are making money. Why? Because the end user will continue to be the end user. And they'll continue to 
use all the products, not because they are doing it for the hopes of making money, but because they're using it and saving money and making money already. If your business is not like that, it will not work. This is why Atomy works. And I'm trying my best today to logically explain it to you all because I want you to have that hope and that faith that if you continue to build, you will get lucky. And you will get some superstar under you who can speak, who can bring in 50 people a day, who can sell 300K worth of products every single day, and you get matched and matched and matched and matched. Because it will work. But if you, the only way that you can fail in Atomy is when you give up. Don't worry about the time that it takes to become successful. Because that is irrelevant to you. Everybody has a different speed. Just because somebody is faster than you, don't be discouraged. Because as long as you continue to do the business, you will not fail. I guarantee. Okay? So everybody, when you wake up in the morning, do you always want to go to work? No, but why do you still go to work? Because you gotta bring home that paycheck. Even if you don't want to do atomy, you still what? Have to do atomy. Because you're going to regret not doing it. Do you agree? So I want to leave you with that, okay? So it's not about if you want to do it, you need to do it. And you should have started yesterday. Okay? So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Have a great day.